Hey guys, what is going on today? Bojo here, and we are back for our NHL 16 BGM following the Philadelphia Flyers. And hopefully we'll be get able to get to the start of year number four in today's video. We'll get through free agency today without a doubt, but uh, we got some we got some interesting stuff to talk to you guys about today. So uh, I spent a little bit of time going through the trading blocks and the trading mill, I guess you could say, of all the NHL teams looking at the team, the players that were really unhappy with their teams and uh, thinking about some possible trades to make. So first off, let's go to player morale to start you guys off with and show you guys exactly who we're probably going to be trading in this video. First off, Sam Warren is 84 overall right now. He jumped up. He's now that top six defenseman. So he'll be ready to play, which means uh, Luke Shen, yeah, you're not going to be here anymore. So we're going to pull exactly what Ron Hextall just pulled, and we're probably going to be trading away Luke Shen in this video, without a doubt. So... Uh, I know a bunch of you guys were also saying about the free agents for signing guys like JVR and Timu Polkanen and guys like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna oblige to say no to those players because I do have some trades that I think you guys might be interested in uh, dealing with here, but we're gonna get into that right now. So let's go into the trade and improve scheme and let's go to proposed trades. So I was looking through all the teams and I found three players specifically who were really unhappy with their squads right now because of morale and how they could actually fit in on our team. So I'm going to show you guys the three players right now. First off is from the Buffalo Sabres center, Sergei Achistov, who's currently 80 overall now because of his morale. He's a third line scoring forward as a playmaker. Now he doesn't have the best puck moving skills other than puck control. He's got a very, he's got a really hard wrist shot and a decent shot. Uh, defensively, not really good defensively at all other than shot blocking. And senses, he's not really too great there. So I think out of the three guys, he's probably the weakest. And I really didn't think I would go after him all too much. Second player, who's really unhappy, is kind of not really uh, in between. He's kind of unhappy with the team he is playing on right now. Which would be Alexander Wenberg from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Once again, 80 overall, center playmaker. But he's unhappy with the team right now. And we know that he is a second line forward. So you know that Wenberg actually does have some pretty increased stats somewhere along the lines. Probably in his sh slap shot accuracy, I would think, because 77 seems kind of low for a playmaker like that. And he's got slap shot power of 80, so it only makes sense that his slap shot would be a little bit better. Probably his defensively as well, and probably his puck moving skills. So you know Wenberg is probably a top two player of some sort, and he's unhappy with the team he is on right now. 83 overall. So that was the one player. And then finally... If we go to the Winnipeg Jets, who I believe we are going to be making the trades with here, is because of this guy. Look at Nick Patan. Nick Patan is, like, furious with the Winnipeg Jets right now. He's a third-line scoring forward, same age as Wenberg, 23. Well, actually, no, same age, yeah, same age as Wenberg, who's 23. Media potential for a top-line forward, he's 75 overall, but we know he's definitely a lot better than that. And uh, you can see his puck moving skills... It's still in the 80s, which is good. Shooting will be a little bit better. Defensively, definitely a lot better. And uh, he's a center. So I think Nick Patan is probably the perfect player to go after right here. Because I can probably do a package deal to the Winnipeg Jets for both Luke Shen and Sam Gagne to get rid of the team. So you guys know I was contemplating uh, giving away Sam Gagne. And uh, I'll show you guys his stats in a minute once we get to it. But the Winnipeg Jets are interested in Luke Shen. We do not have any need for Luke Shen right now. So I think that is uh, an easy trade to make right there to give away Luke Shen. But then when we go and take a look at Sam Gagne, you know, he doesn't have much trade value there as a third line uh, scoring forward. You know, he's got the good puck movement skills, which will probably be the reason why Matt Reed was so successful this year. Could be Scott Lawton as well, helping that out. But still, uh, you know... Gagne has some really good puck moving skills as a third line forward. You know, he's not going to be getting any better, but, um, I mean, if we take a look at his stats for the past, like, three years, so far in Philadelphia, you know, he's been getting, like, 30, 40 point totals around there, but he's just a minus player. Minus four, minus 19, and a minus one last year. Even though he had a very good season, he was still a minus player. So, he doesn't take that many shots either. He's kind of a pass-first kind, of pass kind of player, so... 
I really don't think we need Sam Gagne. He's he's a little bit old, 28. We want to try to make the team a little bit younger, do a little bit of an accelerated rebuild. And I think we can get rid of Sam Gagne in this deal as well. So what I'm going to get back from the Winnipeg Jets is I'm going to take back the guy who they are really unhappy with right now is Nick Patan. We're going to take a little bit of a risk on Nick Patan because it's not really a risk because he is considered a third line scoring forward. So we know we can put him on the third line without any questions. So we're not going to take any risks here of trying to rely on our prospects. If our prospects do get better, then sure, we'll find some place for Nick Patan to play. Or, you know, we could trade him again to another team. But I think that's probably the best option to go for right here is just to trade. Get back Nick Patan. Or we could just go for a first over, uh, get back a first uh, overall pick as well. Now I'm thinking about it. Do I want to take a risk that we're signing somebody in free agency? No, I'm going to, I'm going to take, I'm going to take my chances with my progressing my prospects. So Nick Patan could be kind of a rental player for a couple of years. But still, I think it's a good deal to make because he's very unhappy with the team and his trade value is so damn low. So we'll get back Nick Patan. We'll get back probably a first round pick from these guys. I'm pretty sure we can grab a first on the Winnipeg Jets without any issue. Now, uh, the trade value seems to be a little bit in favor of the Winnipeg Jets. Okay, uh, I could give back a second. Because if I give him a second, the second round pick is going to be probably a high 50s. Because that's where I expect my the Flyers to do this year. I, I expect us to be a good team once again. So that's like a high 50s overall pick. And I can move up to have two first round picks this year. Which will be probably, you know, if the Jets have a good year, they could be like a late first round pick or they could be an early first round pick depending on how they do so i could throw in a second or i could maybe throw in a prospect let's see what prospects do i have to give to this winnipeg jets team let's see goaltenders uh tomac vince ranford ranford was the guy we signed right or was it vixton the guy we signed we have them both signed okay we have both of those guys signed now vixton is the unsigned guy we could give him Ranford. I don't expect me to keep Ranford because by the time Stolarz and, Mato and Tomek are on the NHL team, I think they'll be way, way past. So we could give them Ranford. I really don't have a need for Ranford. And that's almost like a second round pick as well because Stoli and Tomek are my go two goaltenders in the AHL. Yeah, let's give uh, let's give them Ranford. Let's throw this in. Uh, Winnipeg would have 50 players in the organization. All right, let's take, let's take back a goaltender then. Uh, we can't take back a goaltender because they have way too many players. Uh, can it be any player? If it's any player, I'll just take back like a scrub defenseman. I could take back Paul Postman. He's not really happy with the team either. Uh, I could take back Paul Postman. All right, he's really unhappy with the team as well. So we could probably maybe do this. All right, so Luke Shen, Sam Gagne, and a prospect goaltender that we're probably not going to use for Nick Patan, a first round pick, and Paul Postma, seven defenseman. You know, a seven defenseman, he'll be happy in that depth role as well. So that could actually be pretty good for us right there. All right, so let's see if this goes through. Shen, Gagne, and Ranford for Patan, and a first from the Winnipeg Jets. Trade rejected, a bit off in value, a bit off they say. Okay, so I can add in just something mediocre here. Let's add in another draft pick. Let's add in a, whoops, this is all whacked up years let's add in a fourth for this year a fourth and a fourth and a fifth we'll add that. Uh, fourth and a sixth we'll add those in fourth and a sixth uh trade accepted there we go we believe this transaction will contribute to our success success here in winnipeg so we're accepting your trade off all right cool so got rid of luke shen and sam gagne get a little bit of a ca salary cap dump there we get back a first round pick from the winnipeg jets and we get a prospect well, not really a prospect, a player that we can use on our team immediately in Nick Patan. So let's check, take a look at Patan, see what his actually overall is after we have like a player meeting with him. Okay, so he's 82. That's not too terrible. It's one overall less than Gagne. Um, you know, hopefully he'll, we'll be able to race him up a little bit. He's still kind of in the middle now. He's not really ups He's not upset, upset, like pissed off, angry, but he's kind of in the middle now. He's kind of like not really sure what to feel on his new team right now. But his shooting category is pretty good. It's a lot better than Gagne's was. He's a fast skater, not really too physical. Defensively, it's okay. He's got really good stick checking. Senses is good, good offensive awareness, and good puck moving skills. Okay, so I think it's not as great as Sam Gagne was puck moving skills wise. Better shooting category, I would say. But, uh, you know, if we can help grow him up with a, a couple of morale boosts, and he's still young, he's still getting better with uh, medium potential to become a top nine forward, I think that'll help out as well. And I still think Matt Reed can be pretty successful with that. All right, so there we go. We got a third line player there in Nick Patan. We 
freed up that roster spot for Sam Warren, so he'll be able to play there. And I think our defensive lineup is going to be set for this coming year. So Delzado's upset with that. Training away Luke Shen was not a good move to make. Well, that was a hard decision. I'm sorry it affected you that way. Positive effect. Okay. I definitely think you got the best asset in that trade. You won't regret trading for me. All right, Nick. Let's see. Don't get please. Some are always evaluating our roster. Welcome aboard. I think uh, I think we got a fair deal in that trade, so don't let me down. I'm expecting big things out of you. Okay, no effect on them. That's good. That's good. Rather have no effect than, uh, you know, have a negative effect on uh, Patan. We want him to feel welcomed here. So Patan will easily slot into that third line position. We'll change him from a center to a winger because Lawton is definitely uh, the major center to play there. All right, so let's sign free agents now. Now, as I was saying, you guys saw these all these free agents like Kadri, Turris, Vlasic, JVR, Fowler, Kreider, players like that. A lot of people wanted me to sign JVR, but I just don't see, I don't have the need for it. There's no reason for me to sign JVR. The only reason I signed TJ Oshie last year was because I needed, I needed a, a, a first line player. And TJ Oshie was that first line player. And clearly we saw that he helped out this team tremendously last year. Simmons seemed to thrive tremendously on that second line with Sean Couturier and Braden Shen. So I think moving Simmons down, keeping TJ Oshie up on that first line was a really good uh, thing for our team. And like I said, just bringing JVR onto the team doesn't really do anything for us because then what does that move? That moves Oshie down, Simmons is out of a roster spot. We don't need that. So I think a free agency here, I'm just going to sign my debt players. I think I'm going to sign maybe like a center and a uh, a center and a a center and maybe like a winger or two. And then um, Polkanen is actually that second line player. So a lot of people were telling me to sign Timu Polkanen as well. But once again, he's 26 as a sniper. I don't need that. Um, we're going to let the prospects grow. So uh, a winger and maybe a center or two to bring into this team for a deck role. So somebody who's comfortable in a depth role is something I'm looking for here. So we got a lot of fourth line players here. A lot of fourth line players. All right, I'm looking for the depth here. Might take a little bit to get down to there. Okay, here we go. Here's all the depth forwards. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, these are the players I'm looking for. All right, Jesper, uh, Jesper. <laughs> Justin Fontaine's up here as well. Jesper Faust, he's kind of young. As a right winger, a sniper, no, 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 no. I need, like, the depth defensively players. Okay, so Fontaine. All right, so Fontaine and Foss. So no for him. No on Foss. Brett Connolly, no, he's a sniper. Matt Stajan. Stajan would be not really that great defensively yet. Uh, Maxim Lapierre, no. Nathan Gerby, no thank you. Thomas Fleischman, no thanks. Gabriel Bork, not as great defensively as I thought he was going to be. Calvert, no. Brooks like that is one hell of a depth player right there that I would not mind. Very good two-way forward, pretty good as a center. He's gotten the good face-offs. Let's give a contract out to Brooks like That is something I would definitely be interested in. A uh, one-year deal for you, Brooks, on $1 million for a one-year contract on a uh, one-way deal. Yeah, that's exactly what I want you on a one-year deal. You're going to be a depth player, so you're going to be sitting on the bench. You're comfortable in a depth role. Every, every now and then if injuries do occur. So you'll be sitting on our bench. So Brooks like one year deal there for him. All right, so there's one player on our squad. All right, Jeremy Morin, no, sniper. Rich Peverly, Peverly would be a really good player to add as well. He's another center, but he could easily get put into like a, a wing position as well. So Peverly would be really good. Uh, Peugeot, Peugeot, he's 25. Nah, not really that great defensively. But Testu's good defensively. I don't know why they have him as a playmaker, though. Uh, Scott Wilson. Nah, Curtis McKenzie is a two-way forward. He's okay. Uh, Talbot. Max Talbot's okay, but uh, he doesn't take penalties. You get Max Talbot back on the squad again just as a depth roll. Brandon Pruss, no thank you. Burroughs, no thank you. Uh, Chris Terry. Anton Lander. Nestor Sell. I'm looking for somebody else. Tori Mitchell would be good as well. Tori Mitchell looks pretty good. I definitely think I want to go after Rich Peverly, but I want to see if I can find a will uh, a winger. William Carlson, Graham Black. Oh, now we're getting to the minor league scoring forwards. Okay, so we got past those guys. All right, so I think we're going to go with Rich Peverly here. Yeah, let's send out a contract to Rich Peverly as well. 
Uh, okay, he wants a two-way deal, so I'm perfectly fine with that for Rich Beverly as a depth forward. All right, two-way deal for Rich Beverly. Cool. And uh, maybe we should get one more winger just in case. Get a third, third kind of player. No, let's get Talbot. Let's get Max Talbot on here. One-year deal, one million dollars for Max Talbot. Get him in there, and then we'll grab up the one or two depth defenseman just in case. All right, so let's uh, sort this role out here. No reason for me to sign prospects as well. All right, so the roles. I need depth defensemen. People who are comfortable with depth defensemen roles. Here we go. How many are there? Uh, not many, but, you know, perfectly fine with this. All right, so who we got here? Victor Bartley, Justin Falk. That'd be a good player to sign right there, Justin Falk. Brian Strait as a defensive defenseman. That'd be not bad. Uh, Barbario's there again, so we could get Barbario back if we want. Uh, Bur Burwesk. It's apparently pronounced Burweski. I don't know how, but Burweski would be pretty good. Burwiki, I usually say. But uh, Schmidt's there. Schlemko. Matt Donovan. And that's it. Okay, I think we could probably get Burweski and probably Justin Falk. I would rather take Justin Falk rather than straight. Well, straight wouldn't be bad because we don't have other more defensive defensemen. The only two defensive defensemen that we have is going to be... Sam Warren. So, uh, well, Burweski's a defensive defenseman anyway. Okay, so let's get Burweski here. Uh, one year deal, one way contract there for Burweski. The depth defenseman, cool. And then let's get uh, who else was a depth player? Donovan. Donovan's only 77 overall. Well, somebody a little bit higher. Schlemko, he's defensive defenseman. Schmidt, he's 26. Uh, let's see, Barbario. We can get, yeah, let's get Barbario back. Let's re sign Barbario. Yeah, one year, one million dollars. Rivera, cool. All right, so there's our defense, our depth player signed. Goaltenders, we do not need, and I don't think there was any prospects that we need to sign either. All right, so we got the depth players. Let's see if those, if our depth players sign, and then we'll just simulate ahead. All right, so let's advance the days here, a couple days, and let's see if we can get players on our team. All right, uh, Bear for a fourth round pick from the Coyotes. I also added in my trade blog, if you guys can tell. Bear for a fourth round pick from the Arizona Coyotes. All right, who is this guy? Bear. Alec Bear, uh, fifth round pick. He was a fifth round pick. Low AHL fourth line forward. For a fourth round pick? Sure, Arizona. Thank you. I'll take that. I drafted with him in the fifth round, then I get a fourth round pick for it. So I get a better chance of getting a better prospect for it. So I'll take that. Thank you, Arizona Coyotes. I'll take that very much. All right, advance a day here. Come on, let's see. All right, so Max Talbot's good. He's on our squad. Uh, Mark Barrio is on our team. Borowiecki, Brooks Lake, and Rich Peverly. Okay, so we got pretty much all the prospects that we needed. Now, a lot of morale changes are going to lower it because, um, you know, some players are going to feel a little bit, you know, not really disengaged, but they're going to feel a little bit awkward because we signed some players for their roles. But... It's not going to affect them as a whole anyway because they're going to be um, glad to join the team. Not being on the team was weird. Uh, let's see. Before we judge the value or signing. Don't get complacent, Max. You've been on this team before. Don't be uh, Don't be feel weird about it. Oh, yeah, Postma. I forgot we got Paul Postma in that trade for the... Um, I forgot about that. So I completely forgot that we got Paul Postma in that trade for... Um, or Nick Patan as well. So I completely forgot about that. But, you know, he seems pretty good. 79. Once again, uh, welcome aboard. I think that's a trade that will leave both teams happy. No effect. Cool. Okay. But I completely forgot about Postma, so he'll be a depth player as well. And uh, I think we're good. I think we are good. I don't think we need to go out for any of the big name guys. I think we're good. So let's just simulate our little butts all the way to the end of free agency. We'll move up to the beginning of the regular season. We'll check out the squad. We'll see what the about these overall jumps, and we'll see exactly who's going to play where. Okay, uh, Ulf Bachman, Kevin Davis, and Kinu Yamamoto for Jason Pominville in a second. I'm going to decline that trade because I need those players. Okay, Bachman, Davis, and LaBerge for Pominville in a second. No, thank you. <sighs> Maybe I should just edit out my trading block. Yeah. Let's stop the simulation, because Minnesota is going to be on my ass. Kevin Davis in a third for Patrick Sharp in a fifth. No thank you, Dallas. I'm going to edit my trading block of like my supplies and once, because that's going to be annoying. If 
I have to deal with that. Trading block. Edit my trading block. Alright, so Matt Reed is still the only one on there. Uh, once. Let's just get rid of... Let's just get rid of once. I don't need any guys like third round picks. Picks are good. I'll leave the picks on there. I'm always willing to trade away my... Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, current picks. I don't want to... Well, current picks are fine. We'll leave the picks up there, but I do not want any uh, any players popping up on my team for, um, for trading. So, let's get rid of that. Go back to here. Continue to simulate. And we should get going. All right, so... I think we're going to be a good team this year once again. Uh, the defensive prospects have had one year under their belts. Sam Warren is going to be the final one to join the squad this year. So all five of our defensive prospects will be on the team. And we have, uh, what do we have? We have two offensive defensemen in Shane Gostisbehere and Michael Dozato. We have two two-ways in Provorov. Well, three two-ways in Provorov, Sanheim, and... Ravrov, Sandheim, and uh, da, 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 Hag. And then we have the one defensive defenseman in Sam Warren. So I think we're going to be good this year. Defensively, I think we have a good, nice little spread of our D-men. And uh, I think we should be good to go. All right, so let's simulate day before the first preseason game. And we'll check everything out here. All right, here we go. All right, so let's check out the squad now. Let's check out the lines. Let's check out the teams here. Whoops, still need to edit lines. Let's go to contractos. Con let's take a look at everybody's contracts, see the overalls, and let's see how good everybody is going to be. All right, so let's go to goaltenders here. Take a look at everything. All right, so Steve Mason and Michael Neuver is still 87 and 85 overall. Neuver is on the last year of his deal, so hopefully Stoli will be ready next year. And then Mason might get traded next year as well, but we'll see about that. He continues to play really well. We'll see two 30-year-old goaltenders. Perfectly fine with those guys. 87 and 85. Whoops, I didn't mean to switch the team. In the system, we got Anthony Stolarz. Is an 80 overall? Matej Tomek is a 77. All right, so Anthony Stolarz is 80 overall. Still a minor league starting goaltender. Medium potential to become a backup now. Okay, so his potential did change, as you guys can see. He's no longer a fringe starter anymore. He now will has the potential to become a backup, which is very, very good. That's what we wanted out of him. So, Vickstead's unsigned. If anything happens with these guys, if they get injured during the year, we can sign Vickstead, and he could go right into the, the goaltenders in the AHL. So, that's good. Stoli is now a backup, which is really, really good. The Neuver, is Neuver considered a starter? No, he's a backup goaltender. He just has the potential to become a starter. That's weird. All right. Uh, defensively. All right, we're going to have to obviously leave those guys there. There's seven defensemen. There's Barbario and Borowicki, but they're still the depth guys, which is good. So they'll stay there. Uh, Delzato, 84. Ghost, 84. Robert Hag, 87. Sam Warren, 86. Let's go, defensive prospects. Let's freaking go. Robert Hag, 87 overall now. Top four potential. Uh, defensively, very, very good. Almost upper 80s for all his defensive categories. That's great. But Sam Warren... He was 84 at the end of the year. He's now 86 overall as a top six potential D-man. So he'll get top six time. Very good defensively. That stick checking is massive. Shooting is great. Physical. Whew, that's good. Discipline is the only thing that worries me. But still, he's had a lot of good morale boost over the uh, over the offseason. Yeah, a very good offseason progression. All right, how about the prospects, though? How about uh, my really, really good players? Sandheim still 87. Provorov is an 86, which is good. I think he was an 84 in the offseason, so now he's an 86. A lot of these guys are elite potential, so we're going to have to find some places to spread these guys out, give them all some good time. Might have to move everybody up and down throughout the roster and see exactly where we're going to end up. But, yeah, we can move around the depth players on the defense and whatnot. Let's take a look at overalls here. Uh, yeah, so Sandheim, Provorov, Manning's good. Postma, Bachman is good at 76. Davis will get the play. Uh, Googliev, everything else looks to be pretty good with that team. Good. All right, so in the system are fine for D-men. We are perfectly fine. We have a nice look at defensive squad. All right, right wingers. Jake Voracek. Oh, look at all these guys. We're gonna, well, just Wayne Simmons needs to be signed next year. So Voracek's still in the 90. Simmons is at 88. Reed's still at 83. Brian White is good. Talbot will be our depth player right there. In the system for right wingers. Okay, Julian. Oof. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, Julian Gauthier and Timu Meyer both have lost potentials. So Gauthier went from low top six to low top nine. He's considered a depth forward, but he'll be playing in the AHL. 
Timo Meyer went from low elite to back to low top six again. So he's been kind of going back and forth. And they're both depth forwards. So Gauthier and Meyer will be getting time in the AHL this year, it seems. I think next year they'll be ready. Next year they definitely will be ready. And that way uh, Matt Reed can definitely go by year's end. So we'll have to see. We'll keep an eye on these guys. We'll keep an eye on them because, you know, they definitely could increase in their overall. And if they do, then they could easily slot into that third line position because I think they can definitely fit in there. Uh, Vince Connolly, weren't you supposed to be like a really, didn't you have like third round of last year? Weren't you like the top really good potential and you just completely lost it? Or am I thinking of somebody else? I don't know. I thought he had really good potential. I don't know. I'm just thinking differently. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Jeff Loves and Albe Kubel are still good. I think Albe Kubel is going to take Matt Reed's spot in a couple of years. Maybe not next year, but the following year. I think Albe Kubel will definitely be able to slide into the Flyers roster there, essentially, as that sniper that we want. But everything else is okay. That sucks that Gauthier and Meyer lost their, lost their potentials again. All right, Oshie's still at 86, 88. Shen still at 86. Bornaval at 81. What's Bornaval still looking like here? Meyer League scoring forward, so he can get probably sent back down again. Okay, and then we go to the, in the system for the left wingers. Brendan McMillan, he'll get called back up. Uh, Oscar Limbaum, 78, bottom six, which is good. Tell Lier, oof, Lier is just losing overall. Yeah, Lier is probably not going to make it on this NHL team. I can just see it right now. He could probably sit this year, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Edgar O'Sullivan, 77, top nine potential is good. Reed McDonough, he'll be playing in the CHL. That'll be fine for us. Good. And then finally, we move to centers. We got Claude Drew at a 92, so that's really good. He actually went up again. Uh, Sean Couturier at 85, Scott Lawton at 84, Kruger, Patan, so he'll be down there. Patan still at 82. Didn't get a big jump, but, you know, he'll be there on the third line. Uh, Brooks Lake and then Rich Peverly are good. AHL top six and the NHL top six. They're still depth forwards, which is what we want. Well, Peverly's a minor league scoring forward, but still, uh, we can throw him back down there. Well, he's on a one way. doesn't really even matter. And then in the system, we got uh, Eric Cornell is 83 overall. He is a depth forward as well. So, AHL time. AHL for these depth players. Uh, Konechny, depth forward. AHL time. Uh, Noel. He's minor league scoring forward. Same thing with Cousins, Wall, LaBerge, and Luchuk. Okay, so that's what happens there. None of our prospects got better, but next year and probably halfway through the year. Oh, but Tan's happy now, so he's not really in the anywhere on the medium anymore. He's happy now, and he, actually, he just got signed on his uh, three-year entry-level deal, so that's actually really good. It saves us cap room as well. We have 11.4 million dollars worth of cap space available with all these depth players on our squad. So. I think we're pretty good to go here. Uh, pretty much the big the big part is that our defense got really, really improved. So that's a good sign right there that our defense got improved. I have to go to roster moves first. So let's go to roster moves here. Let's send some guys up and let's send them down here. All right, so goaltenders. Mason and Neuverth, Stolars and Tomek. We're good there. All right, defensively, Delzato, Hag, Ghost, Barbario, Morn, and Borowicki. Okay, so we're going to leave Barbario and Borowicki up here. That means we just need to call up Ivan Provorov and Travis Sandheim to the squad. And we're going to have over 20 skaters, so that's fine. Uh, that would be over the player limit. Okay, so I can't do that right now. Skaters is up at max, so I'm going to have to... Send down two defensemen. Well, they're the depth players. Figure it out in a minute. I need to. I need to call them up though. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, let's go to forwards first. We can send one of them. Well, we need to send both of them down, I guess. Yeah, Barbario and well, they're on one-way deals. Well, that's fine. They're on one-way deals. It doesn't really matter. So. Barbario and Borowicki go down. Provorov and Sandheim come up. Good there. Okay. We'll probably get rid of some of the skaters on our NHL team. So we have one, two. Uh, how many guys we have on the NHL team? One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll call up somebody because I think we'll be able to move some skater roster spots down in a bit. All right. So then we get to the forwards here. Well, hold on. Uh, I can start by right wingers. Yeah. All right, so Max Talbot, he stays up here as depth. 
Uh, left wingers, Bornwall gets sent down. Okay, so Bornwall gets sent down, and then centers. Uh, I think Tan stays. I think Brooks, I think Peverly can go down. Yeah, Peverly can go back down. Uh, we can call up one depth defenseman here. So we can go with one depth defenseman. So who we want it to be? We can either have it be Postma, Barbario, or Burweski. Who do we want? Well, Postma. Mark Barbario or Burweski. I want Burweski up here. So Burweski can go up there for depth on the defense. So there's one guy that can play there. All these other depth guys can play in the AHL. Uh, let's see, so there's that for the in the system for defense. So Burweski will be the seventh defenseman, I guess. Right wingers again, so Vorchek Simmons, White Reed, and Max Talbot is fine. Left wingers, uh, Shen and Oshi, and then centers, Kruger and Like. Uh, Brooks Like, Marcus Kruger. Kruger is definitely going to be on our team again this year, so he stays. So we can leave Like, Talbot, and Borowiecki up here. So three scratched, healthy scratches for the team I think will be good for us. Okay, so we can go back to, uh, I should just pick best lines. Uh, let's just go to options, best lines for both teams. Okay, so if we have to edit it up, hold up, it's on turbo mode again. I have to wait it out. Turbo mode, gotta love it. All right, anytime you're feeling ready to end turbo mode game, would really appreciate it. Anytime you feel like it, thank you, okay. Okay, so starting lineups. Okay, so we're gonna go with the same starting lineup that we had last year. TJ Oshi on the left, Kludger on the right, on the center, Jake Voracek on the right. Second pair, we're gonna have Braden Shen on the left, Sean Couturier in the center, and Wayne Simmons on the right. Third line now, we're going to have, let's see, so Brooks Lake and Max Talbot will definitely be scratched. All right, so Patan plays, Brooks Lake will be scratched. Uh, Talbot will get scratched as well, so Ryan White goes here. Nick Patan will switch him to a left winger. So we'll switch Nick Patan to a left wing. We'll leave Matt Reed there on the right. Well, technically, we could switch Matt Reed to a left wing and move Nick Patan to a right wing. So that way, their hand in this is where we want it to. You can let me know, guys. What do you think we should do there? Should we move Nick Patan to a left wing, or should we move, uh, or should we move him to a right wing and switch Matt Reed to a left wing? We could do either or whatever you guys feel most uh, comfortable with. But Reed did put up 40 some points last year playing on the right side so we could leave him there and then Talbot gets uh scratched for Kruger I believe no Kruger's in there who who are we missing Kruger's right there White's right there who are we missing oh McMillan McMillan needs to get called up that's who it was go to roster moves uh, just go to best lines once again uh options roster moves Centers, Brandon McMillan, where are you at? There you are, because he's a center, right? Uh, well, he's not a center. Ryan White plays center, I think. Who do we have as center last year? I forgot on our fourth line. It was Kruger, right? Yeah. I, right? I'm not, I'm not, like, losing my, yeah, Kruger's a center. So, it should be Kruger, it should be Kruger, White, and McMillan. Yeah, McMillan needs to get called up. Yeah, in the system, Brandon McMillan, wherever the hell he's at. There he is. McMillan gets called up. Good. Go back. Best lines again. Okay. So, once again, that's all weird there because captaincies are going to be weird. So, I'll have to reassign those in a minute. But that's fine there. Jeru Oshie, Epshen, yep, 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 yep. Lawton, Patan, and Reed. And then Kruger, he gets put here. White goes there. And then McMillan gets switched out for Max Talbot. And there is our set lineup there for the offense. Defensively, we're going to have Travis Sanheim with Robert Hags. So that's going to be a nasty one-two punch right there on offense. I think Sanheim might be a little bit better offensively than Hag. I got to check out both of these guys. Yeah, Sanheim is definitely the better offensively than Hag. So he'll go there. Provorov and uh, Shane Gostisbehere. We'll move him up. We'll move Ghost up to get some top four time. 
Zyraro him there, and then we'll have Morin and Michael Delzato play the bottom six. All right, so we got a nice little squad right here on defense. I like it. I like our top two with Hag and Sandheim. They're both top four potential. They're both top four as role defensemen, but putting them both in top two, I think, is going to be really good. Provorov is top four, so he'll be happy. Ghost is actually top six, so I think he'll be happy getting top four time. Delzato's top six, so he'll be happy there. And Morin is top six. He'll be happy there. So I think we got a nice little healthy, help, uh, helpful medium here. We have all left-handed defensemen, though. I just noticed that. All left-handed defensemen. So that's a little bit of a problem right there. But hopefully when we get rid of Delzato and get somebody else in there, we'll definitely need to get a right-handed defenseman in there definitely for our offense so that's where our, our nhl team looks like right there guys i'll edit up the ahl lines next time around i'll show you guys what those look like and uh i think we're looking pretty pretty good like i said the only weird spot right now is that third line it's that third line left wing is nick patan we don't know if, if he's gonna pan out or not hopefully he does hopefully that trade pays off for us trading away sam Gagne and luke shen hopefully it pays up off for us in the long run but other than that, the team is pretty much identical to last year. Other than defensively, exit Luke Shen, insert Sam Warren into the squad now. And it looks like he'll be ready to go for the team. And then, obviously, goaltending, Steve Mason and Michael Neuverth looking pretty good there for the goaltenders. Okay, so there is our team. Scratched our Borowicki like and Borowicki like and Talbot. We have the depth players. We have our lineups set and i think we should be pretty good to go into this year with this flyers team so let me know for changes uh position swaps all that fun stuff let me know what you guys think we should do with this squad so thanks for watching guys leave a like comment subscribe as always and i'll see you guys next time